Hello everyone, I'm Christine and this is Christine Sews A Lot. Welcome to Friday Sews. If you want to find other sewing vloggers, you can search the hashtag Friday Sews in the YouTube search bar. So let's get into it. First of all, I'm filming from a new location. I'm in my parents' guest room because our floors are being refinished at home and it stinks. The smell of polyurethane is so strong. So I've not done a lot of sewing. I did cut out a lot of things in preparation for not having the upstairs available and it just smells too much for me to work at home. Hopefully tomorrow I can get some sewing done because they're finished putting the polyurethane down. I have done a little shopping, so let me show you what I have picked up. The first fabric I'm gonna show you is one that I purchased from fabric.com and it is this polyester DTY, I think in this tiger stripe. Now it's rather lightweight. I was looking for a blue fabric in a tiger stripe to make a sweatsuit for my oldest grandson for his birthday and I could not find it. If you know of a source that is not terribly expensive where I could get like a French terry weight, let me know below. But this was exactly what I was looking for other than it's rather lightweight. So I'm going to try to make some Hudson pants out of this fabric and a pullover. I thought this would be perfect for him to wear when he gets finished with swimming lessons or swimming. So that's my first purchase. My next purchase is some items I picked up from 5 8 Seams in West Ashley. So this was really kind of fun. I was very reserved. I only bought two pieces of fabric. Here we go. So the first one I pick up may look familiar because I have this in another colorway. But having the opportunity to see this in person, I really do like the navy colorway better. I like how the flowers really stand out and pop. Now, I absolutely adore what I sewed from this in the, what was the colorway? Cornflower blue colorway. This is Le Fleur by Rifle Paper. It's a rayon. And the quality of this fabric is amazing. So I was thinking I might make a Friday Pattern Company square neck top with that. I only have two yards. My other purchase is some Art Gallery Rayon. And it's just in this solid color because I do need to add some solids to my wardrobe. Again, I was thinking maybe a square neck top, something simple that I could wear with a lot of things. So while I was at 5 8 Seams, I saw a mock-up of a dress that I just couldn't get out of my mind. It was so pretty. It's in an art gallery fabric. The top was a little ditzy floral, and the bottom of the skirt was the Charleston fabric. Both of these are art gallery, um, and it was like Rainbow Row kind of, you know, the Charleston single style houses and they didn't have the ditzy floral so i was strong and i said no you know since i can't make it how i want to i'm just going to step away well i went to people places and quilts and guess what i found when i show it to you you'll understand why i couldn't get this combination out of my head So here's the ditzy floral. So this will be the bodice of the dress and the sleeves. And let me put in, this will be the skirt gathered. It is just so sweet together. Again, this is art gallery. 
the fabric collection is Charleston. So how could I not buy this? So I think this would make a great little dress for my granddaughter. I haven't decided what size to make it up and she's one and right about between an 18 month and a 24 months now and this would be for next spring and summer so I'm not sure if 24 months or a size 2 would be appropriate or whether I should go ahead and make a size 3. So I think I'm going to wait a little bit before I cut into this and see how baby girl is growing. So those that was from People, Places, and Quilts. Another purchase from 5-8 Seams was the Oliver and S. It's called the Art Museum Vest and Trouser Pattern. Now I already downloaded a free vest pattern, but when I saw this one, I loved the details. And I thought, since I'm going to be making a vest anyway, let me go a few extra steps and get him something that he can be more than just a play vest. Or at least the pattern can be more than just a play vest pattern. So let me show you the line drawings. It has darts in the front and well pockets and a cute little kind of tie band detail in the back. And I do like Oliver and S patterns, so I'm going to give this a whirl. It's been a while since I've made a welt pocket and I was looking at the instructions and she has us constructing them a little different than how I've done it in the past. So I'm looking forward to trying this new method or new to me method for constructing welt pockets. I think it's always good to try something new if you see a new technique or something done in a different way to go ahead and give it a try because it could be my new next favorite way to make well pot. I'd love to know what you're working on and also have you found a new technique for doing something that you've done many times before and what was it? I'd love to know what it was. So I think as soon as I get back in my sewing room, I'm going to practice some welt pockets using this new method. And I'm going to be getting ready for two collaborations coming up in September. I'm collaborating with Michelle from Michelle Sews Again on her awareness campaign for Sew Purple to End ALC. And I'll link Michelle below. And also I'm working with Madi, Madi Sews, on Project Dress a Girl, which is a charitable project that she is heading up and partnering with Dress a Girl around the world. And I'm going to link Madi's channel below, and I'm also going to link the information for Dress a Girl around the world. It's such a worthwhile program that I hope you do join in on both of these challenges. There'll be more coming up in September because that's when both of the women are running their challenges slash campaigns. So the only other news I have is I am so close to finishing my tutorial for the Fully Lined John John. I had to break it up into two parts because it was too much to upload to YouTube. The first part I have uploaded, it's ready to go. I don't want to launch it until I upload the second part. The second part, I have to refilm a little bit of it. Other than that, I think it's largely edited and um, all that's left to do is to upload it, add the chapters and the links and the details and it should be ready for you. I know I've talked about this for months but the actuality of it is it takes a lot of time to film these full-blown in-depth tutorials or at least it does for me with the limited equipment that I have. So I think until my filming capabilities change the tutorials I'll do going forward will be shorter in nature. I'm thinking along the lines of breaking something down and just demonstrating the techniques. And you'll see this in my collaboration with Madi. I am going to take one of Violet Field Thread's patterns to do my Dress-A-Girl dress. And 
I'm going to show different techniques in detail, but they'll be short bursts. So I'll be doing a neckline, maybe a back placket, that kind of thing. And it'll be just on that as opposed to doing the whole sew along address and let me teach you while I go. Having said that, Fully Lined John John coming soon. I am anxious to get back into my sewing room. I have so much I want to sew. That Oliver and Asfest, I need to get that finished ASAP because I am leaving sometime later in the week to head up to my son and daughter-in-laws and I need that vest finished for a birthday. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, I hope you have a joyful week and that you find the good in all things, especially sewing. Bye.